Hello, welcome to this week's podcast. We are on podcast nine. I'm Riddle and this is Mike and today we're going to be discussing the one and only Nintendo's year. So Mike, do you think it's the best year for Nintendo? That is the question. I think this could be Nintendo's best ever year um, in the gaming industry. Um, we're not talking about the amount of money made or, or, um, or units shipped, but just a combination of a, an accumulation of different things. So uh, the quality of the games over the year, the launch of a new console, um, a number of other different factors into the way the company's changed. So first things first, let's look at their games released within like a year window. Hmm. So I don't think there's been a year where they've had so many of their major titles in such a short window of time mm. that have been universally extremely well received, like masterclasses from, from reviewers and they are masterclasses of games, let's face it. So we've got Zelda, Breath of the Wild. What game? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is the definitive Mario Kart, like nostalgia aside. Um, you got Splatoon 2, that's great for some. It's, mm. it's a great game, I wouldn't say it's mm. an, an amazing game personally, but it's a great game. Um, this is all from Nintendo, right? And then we've got Mario Odyssey. Yep. The definition of pure fun and joy in mm. a computer game, in my opinion. Um, and around that, we've got small, smaller titles from like Mario Rabbids, Rabbits, yep. um, which is a really, really solid game. Um, we've got Hyrule Warriors coming out. Yep. We've got some second party exclusive content like Xenoblade. Yep. Uh, Chronicles 2. Um, and don't forget the DLC for Zelda. Yeah, DLC for Zelda's around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that would be the second DLC, not the first. Yeah. Because we've already had one DLC. And we, we've had uh, a couple like less great games in terms of like the, the launch title. That's how inferior it is. I can't remember. The, focusing on the motion controls of the uh, Joy-Cons. I want one, to two switch. switch. That was it, yeah. yeah. So that's already that's that, that. That sort of like is seven or six, really, clearly. Um, yeah, and we've got tons of third party. We've got the boxing one. Uh, why can't I remember? Arms. Arms. That's yep. it. See, games that, that don't compare to the rest of the games, but still flesh out the library. And then you've got the indie yep. swap of indie titles. So many there. Um, and now third party titles like Doom. Wolfenstein coming soon. Yeah. And this is, if you go from year to year, you're probably looking at March to March. I, I think. Yeah, we've got the best year in Nintendo's history in terms of games. I can't think of another year where... They've had so many heavy hitters in one yeah, year. In one, I mean, there's been some great years, right, where we've mm. had, like, Metroid and um, Resident Evil 4. And Resident World. Year. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, we've had good years, strong years, but nothing to the, to the standard that they've done this year. Yeah, definitely. To the depth of the games. Yeah. I, I'd feel that not only have they produced world world-class games but it's, it's just the depth the quality the music the selection of the story or what they show you depend the, no matter what you play it's got it's, it, they've just gone from <coughs> Wii U bit of a disaster and there's a couple of good games on there no one really bought it and then they've pulled it back to this this year I think I think well they I had think, that, that lull didn't they yeah, from the exactly. Wii U where it's like and there's nothing yeah and and the 3DS has kind of been sort of holding the fort for a while. Um, but I now think that this year they have shown that their hunger and desire to kind of get back to being one of the most loved companies purely for their first party games. And they're now opening it up. I think I think Nintendo has, as we've discussed many times this channel, turned a corner. I think they're a new Nintendo, yeah, man. Mm. I mean, like... You, as much as I love my Wii U and I really enjoy the games on there, you cannot compare the Mario game on the Wii U Super Mario 3D World with, with Odyssey. And I loved it, but it's just a completely different beast of a game. Um, the controls, the way they stick, the way it feels, the visuals, just the level design. Um, they, they've taken it to another level. And with Zelda, it's the same, right? I mean, mm. we didn't get a Zelda on the Wii U, not an original, when we got like Pulps. Yeah. You look at um, Skyward Sword, the last. Zelda release, which is just at the end of the Wii's life cycle, I personally really liked it, but it's not universally well loved, and it again, it's night and day between that and Breath of the Wild, at least in my opinion. Um, and this is in one year, exactly. You know, and they're long, fleshed-out games. You get your, 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 your money's worth. You get your time spent. 
Um, I, st- I still think between Mario and Zelda, for my personal choice for this year, it has to be Zelda. I think Zelda, like, I'm fresh off the heels of 100% in Mario, so like I put all of my time into that recently, but Zelda does more innovation, is the best way to put it, right? Um, it does more for its genre yeah. and, and, and the industry than what Mario does. So it, it you know, every, for me, every 3D world, open, open world um, sandbox game mm. now has to pass like the Breath of the Wild test, right? Can you can you climb everything is like the first question. True. You know, um, can you cook in invisible barriers? How do they look now? Right, cooking. You know, just the the freedom that that game brings. But then Mario's got another level of freedom of just yeah. like, pure sandbox joy and, and just falling into just simplicity of just Zelda story. is very uh, cel shaded, beautiful. Mario's just eye poppingly. Uh, amazing, like just the way the colours mix, like the sand level, for example. Stylized like art is, is just brilliant. Amazing, but I think Mario is sort of like and the funny thing is, I, I mean, I'm going to do a review of of, of 100% completion of, of Odyssey now, and I would actually say its weakest point is is visuals. I mean, it's still really good, but ironically, mm. that's its weakest point because it's it. I think Nintendo could have raised the bar even further, but they got the game out at the right time. It didn't need it. They could have, but they didn't need it. It's still a 10 out of 10 to me. It's I think they went game. for versatility on the level so they could flip loads of stuff into it. Yeah, well, like you get the polygonal design, right? And yeah, yeah. But I, I just think, like, they kept it simple and it, and it worked. Um, games aside, then you got to look at the fact that this is also the uh, new console launch. And it's arguably their most innovative console yet. Um, mm. Well, it's hybrid, isn't it? It's a it's a, f- a final hybrid that everyone's been waiting for, but they're the first ones who took on the step, taking the step, sorry, and now no, <laughs> took on, <laughs> took on the step, took on the step. Look at the turf. Look at turf. Look at turf. Yeah. <laughs> your your so you came in from the outside a little bit. You obviously a re- retro gamer as well, and mm. you love Nintendo, but. You didn't really buy into the Wii U until we started socialising and you sort of bought it and it was a very short-lived love affair. Um, I bought it for the... I honestly bought it for like so I could play, play Splatoon before I bought it, which I quite liked. Um, did you have a Wii? Yes, I did have a Wii. Okay, yeah. So. And I, I had... Um, I didn't have Skyward Sword. I had... My brain's gone. The one before it. Oh, oh Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess. On the Wii, when I first played it, was an amazing game, but I hated the controls. But I'm grin and bear. Yeah, I think about it. That's a good way of putting it. Grin and bear. Actually. Yeah, yeah, to grin and bear those controls. But the game was still outstanding. And then I eventually played the GameCube conversion, and that was pfft, night and day. The controls were lovely on that, and it was still a good game. I I really like the fact you went between worlds. Yeah, I think like the like with the the consoles and and mm. you know, like. like oh. There was rumours of this hybrid console. The NX is a hybrid console, and I mean, I was a bit apprehensive. I was worried that you, you're going to be a jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're like you're a handheld device that doesn't have a great battery life that that is cumbersome, and you're a home console device that doesn't keep up with the competition. And on paper, that looks like that would be the case. But when the Switch came out, it it marries the two together really, really well. And it's the snappy, quick OS. It's the fact that it just turns on, it plays, it boots up, you're in your game. You can leave it where you yeah, were. Yeah, you know? And like, honestly, I can't think of another console. I made. The Wii was innovative. It was really incredible. And I love the Wii for the fact that people I know who aren't gamers were able to play games. Mm. But the Switch takes that idea, it takes the, the, if like the beta idea of the tablet device from the Wii U. It takes elements from the GameCube era, the whole feeling of that mm. 3D, and it just marries it all together. I think it takes a lot from the 3DS, to be personally honest. Yeah? Yeah, if you think about it, 3DS is portable. The OS, if you look at it before you played the Switch, it was actually quite snappy. Now you played the Switch, you, you turn it on, you're like, wow, yeah. this is slow. I, I get what you're saying, like it, but it is a handle, so it kind of needs to be yeah. snappy, right? Um, and that's why I think the Switch is just a collection of all of their really console, all of their console ideas into one now. It's all married into one. I mean, if they ever f- follow through with the patent for VR, then it's also every single console they have ever made into one. But we don't know how that, how that is moving forward. But it's a great, great, great console. Um, it's better than the Wii U 
just I love my Wii U, but it is it's a better piece of hardware. Mm. It does what it says on the tin. Um, I love the fact that it's now Nvidia's given them a lot of help, which I think has basically made the consoles more successful because they are very good with graphics technology. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely driven them. It's an established successful or, company yeah, yeah, know, yeah and they know exactly what they're doing with the hardware they're putting in there because they've already done it really with the video shield tv yeah exactly the tablet. but they just didn't have so much of the games line up now with the switch where does nintendo go forward with this well i mean <laughs> for the rest of this year we can see it safely say it's going to be good I, yeah i think like the switch is a, it's a roaring success further to the point about being the best year for Nintendo I mean mm. it's selling faster than the PS4 did at launch which is set to become one of the best selling consoles of all time in terms of it's like sell through rate and tax rate for over the years unless it takes a drastic side down I don't think it will but the Switch is keeping pace with that year on year relative to when it come out yeah. um, I expected that because it's a handheld console as well and the handheld market is monopolised by Nintendo forget the mobile scene the mobile scene did take a huge chunk of Nintendo's newer market for the casual gamer but the 3DS sold 80 up, up to 80 million units nearly now I think it's, it's past the 70 million mark that goes to show mm. there is a demand for a dedicated handheld device and I think Nintendo's now got the market themselves because Sony's just like yeah it's just not worth the fight so it's, it's, it's going to sell well mm. and I think the future is good for it this is Nintendo's best year for marketing in a very long time like 20-25 years have not had marketing this good it's their best year for for quality of games in a condensed window. Like the, the quality is so high, they compete with them themselves for game of the year, pretty much. Yeah, which is just phenomenal. Best Zelda potentially yet, 3D Zelda ever made. Like like Open of Time will always be my favourite, but mm. it is it's a valid statement. Yep. Like, to some, the best 3D Mario ever made is mm. a valid statement to some. So to be able to say that about their two biggest franchises. It's just incredible in one, in one year. It's just phenomenal. Um, you, you can't really say that previously about a mm. Nintendo's console lifetime. Like, you know, mm. the, the GameCube, I love Wind Waker, but you, many people wouldn't say it's the best of a Zelda made. Sunshine, many people wouldn't say it's the best of a Mario made. And that was over a period of years that they came out between one another. No, I think it had a six, six or so year lifespan. Yeah, I mean, the games, like, so Sunshine, yeah, yeah. that came out like 20, 2002, and I think. Wind Waker, Wind Waker might have been the same year actually. It might have been 2002, sure. 2002, 2003. It was it was within that same sort of window. But again, night and day between what we got for Odyssey and, and mm, definitely and Mario. And it's uh, we're now at the turning point of the end of the year. Um, a few bit new bits of DLC. Waiting to see what they're going to announce next year. It's I think they're going to have a few tricks up their sleeve. They haven't played all their cards yet. This is no. the first thing. Pokemon's coming next year, right? So yep. it's going to be slightly out of the 12 month sort of window. We're probably about 18 months in. We're getting like a, a fully fledged Pokemon game for Switch. I personally, aren't, I'm not getting my hopes up. I think it's just going to be very similar visually to what we have on the 3DS, but just obviously rendered in 1080p um, with some nicer textures. I, it just historically, that's how Pokemon works. I called Pokemon not coming out in the first year as well mm. because historically, Pokemon just doesn't launch with a console when the console launches they release one for the but previous but if Nintendo's generation. got their hand in it don't you think they're gonna say to them look you need to make it deeper and you need to kind of learn what we did with Zelda and Mario and, and take a deep may- look at it maybe because they're not they're, they're not going they're not this is not half an attempt they're going all in or going home and that's what you have to do but Pokemon's that one franchise that just sells <laughs> it does just it's sell just, uh, the fact that they've got Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun. Might, maybe that means that they will put the extra R and D into mm. and development time into the new one. Maybe it does. But the fact that Pokemon Sun and Moon old the Ultra versions is really just a, so a kind a, of cop out. I mean, I'm not saying it'll be bad games, but it's a cop out. You've already got the art assets. You've already yep. got the environmental design. You've so already you've, got the. It should be Pokemon. DLC. Yeah. Essentially, it's just a remix, right? It's, yeah, yeah. it's Master Quest in all of time. From the sounds of it, on paper, there's probably a lot more to it than that. But uh, yeah, I I think. I honestly think to make something like Pokemon, they'll either use like the engine they use for Mario or Unreal. Yeah, probably Unreal, and then use it, or maybe even Nick, maybe do a cel shaded version like Zelda, 
and make a massive world. Imagine having that world with Pokemon. It'd be I, I have to admit, I'll be back in since Pokemon Red and Blue. It'll be the first time I'll be on, I'll be on board. That, ca- that kind of level of detail. And I'm, I'm sorry, but it's possible. And I, I don't think they. I think they're going to go all in. I don't think they're going to go half half attempts anymore. T- time will tell. Obviously, we'll. Mm. It's interesting. We've got both contrasting views on this, but. Mm. Um, then we got. I mean, we got between that and 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 now we've got the Yoshi game. I mean, uh, cool. You know, I expect a, a solid eight out of ten. But I might again might be surprised. It might be the, the second coming of Yoshi's Island. Yeah, yeah, um, true. But it doesn't need to be more than than what it is. It, 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 Yoshi to me is now, unfortunately, for better or worse, the filler content between the bigger titles. Mm. It's a great solid platformer. Most Nintendo fans love it. Most Nintendo fans will buy it. But it's it doesn't have to be exceptional, the same as most Kirby games. Yeah. But hopefully, it, you know, I might be proven wrong, and it's some incredible multi multiplayer local play sort of dynamic take on on Yoshi. Maybe um, we'll we'll, we'll kind of see. We've got also got Kirby as well. I think we've got all these fair parties to jump on board. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They, I think they're going. I mean, Bethesda and uh, or Bethesda and Take Take Two Interactive. Yeah. They've proven that they're, they're committed. If they sell well. Yeah, exactly. Everyone else is on board. Forget EA. EA's. Yeah, I don't think EA are on board. He, he don't know what they're doing with themselves at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of a whole studio and let's hire a whole new studio. But yeah. Yeah, yeah let's monetize the world. Let's but, monetize everything. <laughs> Pay to play. We, we digress. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think you know that service isn't the best of year. And I talk about the, the Switch from a hardware perspective. I mean, the GameCube when it came out was. In and up there is one of the most powerful consoles out of the three. It was more powerful than PS2. It mm. wasn't quite where the Xbox was, but it was doing beautiful things with proprietary you know, disc technology and limited space and, mm. and uh, potential. The N64 was the first incredible, like to me, truly 3D console. I mean, PS1 was obviously 3D, but the, the ele- elevation of control with the controller, yeah. so it was innovative. But but Nintendo stuck with that for low time, and when you play the N64, do you remember playing through those so like Zelda, no load screens, no like, oh god, the bloody disc going. The, this is my point about the Switch I'm going to yeah. get to, right? So, the argument is it's bare bones when it launches. It doesn't have a web browser, it doesn't have stream services, it doesn't have all this other content. But Nintendo never said it was that. Nintendo said, this is a gaming device. Yeah. And they stripped the OS down so it's super fast. Yeah. It's, you know... Um, Flash memory based, so yeah. it's quicker to load and read data from the cards, um, and it just works so quick. And that, as a gaming device, which is, they didn't want to model, model the message at all. It wasn't muddied at all. It was just like, here we go. This is a gaming device. As it I was just, saying, it just works. You pop it in, it just works. You pop the drawings off, it just works. You stick on the pro controller, it just works, and it's delivered one hundred percent on the message. Yeah. So I, I like I see reviews are like six and seven out of ten. I'm like, well, I get that. Like, but then if the argument is it doesn't do these other things, then no mid-tier mobile phone could ever get a 9 out of 10. It's advertising what it can do in the price point or in the market it's trying to be in, and it switches excels. Yeah, but it, it, it does what it says on the team. Uh, exactly. On the, on the, on the tin, I mean. <clears throat> it, it is there to play games, and I agree with you, and I like the fact. The only thing I'd like to add are things. I don't care. I don't want to add anything else to that OS. It's perfect I, for me. I, I would like more, but like I want Netflix on there. I mean, I'd love to be able to just pop up my Switch and it's... I think the Switch, if the Switch is, it tries to be a fully featured tablet, I think that's a good thing. But you have to bury that behind the load up so it, it's not going to be chucking it up in your face. Like, here you go, here we're, we're already going to connect to this service and that service. Just let it boot up fast, let it do what it needs to do. But if I want to watch Netflix, I can watch Netflix. If I want to go on the web, I can go on the web. If I want to um, get a Joy-Con extension with a camera on it, not that I would ever care, but get mm. one with a camera on it, you can take pictures. That like, Something like that, like just... It can do it all. Um, it's it's, it's open ended. It's an open ended book, and I think yeah. that's the difference between that and say the Wii U, which was just like, where do we go from here? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just it's a dead end. That's trying revert back to forgetting about the tablet. Wait, oh, that isn't working out. Let's see if we can focus on a synchronous gameplay again, and it's yeah. too late, and it's unfortunately dead. Yeah, yeah. They're they're just gonna push on that, <laughs> and in the next couple of years, they do a fourteen forty p handheld one, same size as the current Switch tablet. We'll be all good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 this is a console I'm happy to have incremental upgrades on because like mm. your iPad Air or your um, iPad 3 or iPad 4 or iPad 2 you're, everybody can do the same things just a different performance um, yep. and it's perfect for that opportunity give yep. me a dock man with a built in GPU that can render games at 
you know, 4K and you're competing with the opposition, you still play the same game, man. You just let the the consumer choose whether they want to buy into that or not. Definitely. That That's uh, a conversation we've had a few times. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep pr- promoting it. As, that's, what I think yeah. is, that's what I think it should be doing. Um, a 4K dock. Yeah, it's a 4K dock. Even if it costs me another £200, or £300, because what some. No, no, it'll cost you more than that because you've got to get the 4K display. Well, no, but yeah, I wouldn't buy it because I want a 4K display. But if I've, I've got a 4 p one for example. But yeah. for those who would want that, that fidelity, that, yeah. that improvement, or even just the fact that you can improve a 1080p image. Like I think it, it'd be pretty good, mm. um, but again, Nintendo. I don't think we're even touching on the bars part at the moment because it's muddied messages. It works as it is. As the old set, it just works, and that's what I think. This which is key strong point is at the moment. It's it's clear. It's concise. It's not mi- mixing its messages. Definitely which is why one two switch was a bit of a mess because it's like, hey, here's a console where we don't care about the motion controls that much or we're not going to advertise them but here's a launch game that is all about motion controls and it's about family fun isn't it they still want to keep that family fun they have with the Wii and I think my part 101 or whatever yeah 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 <laughs> deluxe on the Switch <laughs> I think that will come I think they just want to keep 3DS existing 3DS users happy but for Nintendo bringing out I think it's a, their best year definitely because they've brought out Metroid game they bought the 3DS, yeah, yeah. And, and that was the return to form for a 2D Metroid. Yeah, they've announced a new Metroid game. I mean, from the fan service, the buzz the fans got. Yeah, we know a new Metroid's coming. We can expect an F Zero now because the yeah. way that the company seems to be behaving is like, hey, we hear you. We, we're actually listening. Um, yep. We get a lot of wait and see, wait and see on things as well. So, I mean, the way they've made their Zelda and Mario games is you never, be... you could wear DLC forever. Like, it, you could DLC the whole of Sunshine into Odyssey and pay yep. like £20 and you've got Another Sunshine. Game. Instead of porting Sunshine into 1080p, just yep. give me Sunshine as DLC. <laughs> With Cappy, you know, taken out and switching, it would just work. Like, the camera would be fixed and the game would be fixed. So you're saying what uh, Nintendo will do is throw Dolphin Emulator on there and run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I said. Don't do. Don't port games, man. Just, yeah. just use your engines that you've got and make them better. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't be afraid to do that. And we're going to have a conversation about remakes and remasters and demakes and and whatnot. So we'll touch on what our views are on that. But definitely. But yeah, this it's is just best year for Nintendo. Definitely, I, I would definitely agree on that. And I think not only is that they brought us a handheld, they let us con- connect a normal controller. For those hardcore fans who just want to play with a controller, if you want to use motion, it's there. If you don't, no problem. You can use how you want. I mean, and I love that this year. And I think purely the cartridge-based system, they work. And I like the fact that you can just shove a memory card in there. If you want games that need more content, exact, i.e. Doom, if you want the multiplayer, you just download it if you want it. Not everybody wants a multiplayer, so why shove it in someone's face? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean... I haven't played him, but the rumour is you've got to download something pretty big. Yeah, it's the so. multiplayer you have to yeah. download. So. But that that would be quite funny because if if you're like a developer, I think EA, you have to download other stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, I, get, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, 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 we, let's not forget, like, Nintendo's actually building relationships again with third parties. Yeah, exactly. And um, they're also presenting another semi-hurdle for them, which is underpowered mm. compared to a home console, but it, that doesn't matter. It's nearly powerful enough. And, and but, you're able to dance But does power cards. always mean good games? That's no, the question. That's just it. With Doom, Doom's had fairly good reviews. It's hitting the 8 mark, right? Yeah. Um, which is, to me, and Scout is a great game. Borderline, mm. good to great game. Um, it's hitting slightly lower scores than it got for the other system, but... That's just, it's an older game. Um, yeah. You're going to get that. But it plays well for what you're getting. It's the same with Mario. Like, you, you talk about graphic fidelity. Yeah. Would Mario really benefit as a game if it was in 14, 4K with, like, super detailed stitching on his hat, right? It, not necessarily. It would be nice if you had that as an yeah. extra, but it doesn't define It's not game. essential, no. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's all about what you do with your games and, how, and, and what defines a game. Exactly. Like, like we saw a lot of people uh, <clears throat> said, oh, it's cell shaded graphics of Zelda. You play that game, you don't care. You, look, I, it's not really shaded, though. Like, like, it, it, it's a conversation we had. Do you remember when I said to you, I spent like 20 minutes because I was waiting for one of the Lionels and I was looking at the sky, watching the, the, the way the clouds moved and just the way the... The dynamic weather. And yeah, yeah. The dynamic, I was just so amazed that I spent more time looking around and that's why I think... It's 
probably one of the Zeldas that I spent the most time on. But in one is, sitting. But this is this is where it comes down to like the, what is what defines a good game, right? You spend a lot of time looking around in Zelda because you need to and want to explore. Yes. You know, that mountain's amazing. I want to go there. I want to find what's there. Whereas a lot of games, and I do this a lot with my high end gaming PCs, I'm just like, this looks amazing. I'm just screenshotting, like, that looks cool. But there's no real benefit to the gameplay. Yes. It's just the immersion. But then, even then, it's like, if I had the game in a lower quality, I would probably still like enjoy, say, Tomb Raider just mm. as much. Um, but it is a little bit more immersive with better graphics. And I think yeah. that's where, like, someone like Zelda proves to the rule that play, the way the game plays, and the way it feels, and the immersion through that aspect is the key element, and then the graphics come second. Yes. But the graphics did look amazing for yeah. a handheld game. It's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like Agari, like, it's the same game on my TV, I got it on the go, it's incredible. Exactly. Um, and we sound like extremely biased, and obviously like, we talk a lot about the Switch and the Logos there, but we have developed a lot of love for the console, and I was a bit of a skeptic, and I'm a, I'm a big Nintendo fan. I was apprehensive, um, because if this went wrong, we were getting Mario 3D World 2. <laughs> right, I like that game don't get me wrong but it's no Odyssey yeah exactly and, and I, I was kind of on the fence whether I should buy it I, I it was probably probably <laughs> you and you and Cy could say to me look and, and I knew I had to buy it because of Zelda because even if I even if the game was half as good as Ocarina of Time I had to buy it and play it hmm. I, it was it was <coughs> heck of a lot better than I expected and I'll tell you what that 195 hours that I put into it, I absolutely loved it. I still haven't got absolutely everything on it because I'm going to go back to it because I spent get so good, much time. Get good new. <laughs> get no, good. I'm I really missed five shrines, for God's sake. <laughs> I missed five shrines and I completed the game before you did with no oh, master right. sword. Yeah. But no master like, sword, I mate. I could have completed the game 10 hours in when I accidentally stumbled in, but that's not yeah. really all there. It, the point is, it's like... I, I spent my that's, time... That's the best thing about the game. You yeah, do what you want with it. Yeah, exactly. Where you you went kind of exploring. I, I did the exploring. Shrine, there was some side quests. Yeah, I think you went around. on that on that. I did pretty much every more or less everything. But I kind of went for oh, what can I do with this? For, I went loads into the cooking because I knew you could mess around and collecting loads of rocks and stuff but, to sell. But you see how like we get carried away talking about the games, right? Mm. This is just something that like I love my games. I've got every every platform that's pretty much been released. Mm. Um, mainstream anyway I haven't got the money to buy super expensive near Jurors back in the day and stuff like that but my point is the buzz around the games on the Switch is I mean we we work in an environment where there's a lot of people who are gamers yeah and I my whole time owning a Wii U I had like four or five friends on my Wii U friend list and you know two of them were probably duplicates where somebody's changed the console all the time but with a Switch um, we're, we're working it's like you got one as well, and yeah, everyone's yeah. quite positive about it. They like the experience. Mm. Um, they're buzzing on it. I still think people don't quite know what to do with it at the moment. Like, well, what comes next? Like, mm. you know, because it doesn't have your battlefronts. It doesn't have your, um, you know, at the moment, yeah. your your core duties. So that the, the big portion of the gaming community are into those competitive online games of service, which Nintendo isn't catering to really at the moment. But it's still they're it. starting to. But, it's, but either way, people still bought it. The buzz is still there. Rocket League's come, which is a big, big coming up to an esports game. Yeah. So there's yeah. loads of games coming out. I think, I think honestly, I think Nintendo's smashed it this year, and I'm really looking forward to next year because I can't wait to see what's coming next. I love the surprises. I just I, we just got surprise after surprise after surprise, and we just were not expecting it this year. I thought we'd have Zelda, maybe Mario, at a push maybe early next year and then bang the, the game just hit him they hit the ground running I think I've got over 60, 70 games on there it's insane Surprises is an interesting word because yeah. Iwata like it's uh, probably missing me it was, it, it, I, I really idolise him as, as a, um, someone in the industry but like he announced the NX at a time where Nintendo was really hitting a low mm. um, you know, it was called NX it was, no one knew what it was at the time um, <clears throat> and he's like yeah we're going to be making mobile games and it sounded like it's just the beginning of the end mm. of Nintendo. What is the NX? What's going on, mobile? And yet, they brought out their mobile content. They get on stage with Apple, the biggest company in the world, and they make a statement like, this is Nintendo bringing Mario to this platform. And it no longer is just a, 
you know, half mm. asked, half baked mobile pool from language, but it's it's a decent mobile game that's premium priced, and you think okay, but still, mobile games seems to be the, the consensus, and then the Switch is fully unveiled, and yet it just goes to show you that you just don't know what was going on with the roller coaster. But it wasn't fully unveiled, was it? The Switch came mm. out and was like, here's what we kind of showing you. Wait, what is it? What it is? What it is? Okay. Another month is another release, and in January's like, here's everything you need to know. Oh, by the way, it's out like well, the, the month's time. Go. Well, the best thing Nintendo did, they didn't go TV, 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 sports, sports, TV, sports, sports, DRM. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he lost him his job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But ironically, again, in the same respect, in a much smaller scale, Xbox has turned around. I think oh, yeah. Xbox, like, is, is, is a, as a piece of hardware, it's a totally viable piece of hardware. I just think they're still stuck on the actual content in which and what yeah. you want to do that. What, which now Nintendo's kind of realised and is picking up the pace. I, I just think we're going to get a lot more third party publishers who are going to come to Nintendo next year and it'll be interesting to see. I mean, as you can tell, I'm not just a Nintendo lover. I've got a PlayStation. I played that as well. Yeah, an Xbox One before you shopped it in. Yeah, well, I had an Xbox One. Got a little bored because they didn't really have any exclusive content and a lot of people I knew either had a Switch or a PS4 so I just thought I'd have both because I can't play the first person shooters on there which I want to play and I can't play like Pro which I love Pro Evo um, because it, I would have bought it on the Switch but they didn't bring it out for it so hopefully <laughs> next year they bring it out and then I can play it on the Switch. And that's the transition that we're still in yeah. I think in a nutshell like what, what, what now? Like uh, It doesn't bother know. me I just want I don't mean. Really, Shoot 'em ups, I can take or leave. See, I, I, I generally, I, I see. I, I, I want a PS4 just to play Uncharted. That, that's mm-hmm. the only exclusive that that screams to me. Everything else I get that is on there that is out on PC, I'll get on PC. That's, yeah. That's the only reason I don't own a PS4 at the moment. Um, I don't play online that much anymore as well, so I don't have that push for the online yep. communities. I'm not tied in. Um, and Steam's through online, so I'm not. I'm not committed one way or another. No, so true. Nintendo's gonna have to pay an online service. We see how that goes. Um, but I, I just think Nintendo's building bridges. Yeah. Um, they're, they're setting new precedents for the company. And yeah, and they've got intri- a young, young talent in their development team, so. They have. They're showing what they can do. But yeah, I think that that's our discussion. Yeah, on, that wraps it up, doesn't it? You can tell we're highly positive on this year. Yeah. Um, we're singing from the rooftops at how long Nintendo's They haven't been perfect. But they never have, right? Yeah, nothing's online's, perfect. Online's a, a, an interesting topic. That it is a bit sketchy <laughs> in a moment. <laughs> well, you got online, you've got the fact that you had the left Joy-Con issue. But with anything, you're always going to have um, hiccups along the way. But you have to measure Do it you know against what, compared, the bad. Compared to other other releases of other electronics, it's actually pretty decent. You, you will get... You've you got to accept the fact that nothing is perfect. Yeah, I mean, to be honest... And that when, when companies it, produce millions of products... And well, they fix it for free. That's the bottom line. Yeah, right? yeah. Just they, will, they will, they will, they will do it to get their console out because that's the way they they are. They have had always have had a great customer service, and I think that's the way they continue. Yeah, I, I find it hit and miss. Generally, like it's really good, but then you, like any company, you get that one person it's like, yeah, what are you called me for? Yeah, but it's, it's like <laughs> that's just it? that's just how it goes. I mean, I I, I lived through the uh, Red Ring of Death era. Um, and oh, Xbox. Yeah, and that was just. That was on another level of total failure. And, oh, God, that was and awful. And a couple billion pound loss. But then, like, you know, Samsung with their phones with the battery wants to catch fire, a couple billion pounds lost. People just brush it under the carpet eventually. They fix the issues one way or another. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think the Switch's issue is power in comparison to the grand scheme of things. They f- they're just so small. If, if you're a big online gamer, then yes, a major deal. So it isn't for everybody. But, mm. again... Nintendo looks to be listening, um, trying to be, trying to learn. Uh, we'll see what the future holds. Definitely, stay switched on. Mm-hmm.